So um, here we are, Gerard Bruman um, from 3T uh, with his beautiful new Strada aero road bike and Gerard uh, is going to talk us around it because who else would be, uh, who would be better to do that than the man who actually, whose idea it is, whose idea this is realised in carbon and uh, metal. Over to you Gerard. All right, well thank you. <laughs> So the whole idea was to think about what a, a road bike would look like in five years from now and an aero road bike at that. Uh, but the first step really is not about the aero, it's about the comfort. Because, you know, to us, I mean, comfort is always important. Whether you're win trying to win the Tour de France and you want to reduce the fatigue from high frequency vibration on the roads and just recover a little bit better, or whether just an average show, I think, you know, comfort is always something that we're, we're looking for. So it's designed around, you know, 28, 29 millimeter tires like this uh, Continental 4000. And then, you know, often the idea is that, well, bigger tires aren't aerodynamic, but of course that's not really fair if you put them in a, a wheel that's designed for a 23 millimeter tire, and you put them in a frame that's designed for a 23 millimeter tire. So we did it the other way around. We started with the tire and designed everything for aerodynamics, you know, back from that. And so all the tube shapes and everything is optimized. You can see the, the gaps with the frame are all optimized for this bigger tire. And the other thing that we really did to improve aerodynamics is um, you know, when you look at the bottom bracket area, just a lot going on there. Normally you have the frame, the derailleur, two chain rings, the crank, the legs, one or two bottles. And aerodynamically, it just means there's just not a lot of space for the airflow to come off of the front wheel onto the uh, frame and onto the rear wheel, because there's just a lot of stuff blocking it here. And eliminating the front derailleur really, really helps you there aerodynamically. And although aerodynamically it's a no-brainer, of course, the question is, do you, can you get the gears? And so here it's combined with an 1136 rear cassette, so that's pretty much the same as having a normal 2x crank set at an 1128 cassette. So that's you know, pretty much the range that you would normally get on 2 by. you get here by 1 by. And I mean, I think most people, but you guys can say mm -hmm. for yourself because you've ridden it, think that this is a, a, you know, a, a perfect solution already. There's some people, so maybe 10, 20 percent of the people who say like, well, th the steps on the smallest cog are a little bit too big for me. So. You know, an 1128 cassette would start with 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, just one tooth steps. But this starts with 11, 13, 15, so two tooth uh, steps. And so to sort of combat that, we're, we've worked on our own cassette, which will be introduced a little bit later, which has those first five cogs, our one tooth steps, but we still get the range that we have here on this cassette. And will so that be a 12, a 12? I cannot say anything else about it than what <laughs> I've said already, but right, you we'll can ask three more times and okay. I'll still not give we'll, you the answer. We'll guess then. You'll, you can, I'm, I'm you can guess, guess all you want. Yeah. But I mean, aside from that also, I mean, you know, there's uh, of course no secret, or maybe it is a secret, but the worst kept secret that all the drivetrain manufacturers are working on one by four roads. So uh, it is happening. And of course, one by 12 is coming in that sense. And maybe if there's still some people who don't think that's enough, one by 13 will coming. So I don't think it's a question of whether it's gonna be one by or two by the future. The future is one by. And if there's any doubts that people still have, then over the next years, those will be resolved, but within the realm of, of a one by solution. And I think it's also important to understand, of course, this is a very high-end bike and, you know, that's, that, that's what we do and we try to make the best of the best. But I think the real advantage of the one by road really actually lies on the other end of the spectrum. It lies at, you know, uh, bikes for, for beginners and maybe the thousand dollar bike. Because if you're just starting cycling, a lot of people don't like the shifting, right? It's too confusing, two shifters and the left uh, works in the opposite of the right, really, when you want to go to easier or harder gear. So just going with one shifter just makes that a lot simpler. And also, if you have a $1,000 bike, well, if you eliminate the front derailleur and one shifter, now it's a $900 bike. That's a big difference. Or you can put that $100 into just better wheels or better tires and really make the experience better. So I think as, a, as an industry, we should make cycling as easy and as fun as possible. Yeah, and so overall, of course, you drop a bit of weight on the drivetrain. You've added a little bit because of disc brakes, like in this bike, which, you know, uh, debate, the debates are, of course, endless, but, uh, but, but for sure will end up with, with that solution. And you've uh, um, designed the fork as well to, to aero optimize the disc brake. Yeah, and it's aero optimized only for disc brake, right? So it's not one where you say, oh, we have this platform, we offer it in, in rim brake and in disc brake, we only offer it in disc brake because get, then we can really optimize it, right? Then we can make uh, a crown that's almost non-existent, like we just pull the whole crown into the lower bearing. Yeah. And of course, you can't make that smaller crown if the fork also has a uh, a rim brake version yeah. because then you need a lot more material because you're going to drill a big hole in it and stick mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a, a brake on it. And the same with the way the adapter here is all integrated into the fork leg. You wouldn't do that if you also made a, a rim brake version because then that fork leg would look pretty stupid if there was yeah, nothing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Though I suppose the other, you know, again going back to that thousand dollar bike, um, the, which is for many users going to want something that's quite versatile. You might want a fork then that you can stick a mud guard on or whatever. Sure. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, of course, on the one by a thousand dollar bike, maybe it's not all you know super super aerodynamic yeah, maybe yeah, it is yeah. a bit more versatile maybe you can also put a 35 millimeter cross uh, tire in like that yeah. that's really all separate from from what one by offers yeah, you for yeah, simplicity yeah. of course this is one by uh, offered for aerodynamics not for simplicity yeah, but yeah. still we think that's the way forward for many many reasons and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and simplicity being one of them yeah. so you've optimized this bike to be aero efficient with 28 mil tires and we were talking Correct. earlier that that's a measurement that you make on the tire and not necessarily a measurement that's printed on the side of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the rim width has an effect on what the effective width is of the tire. And also, you know, every tire manufacturer seems to have their own definition of how wide a millimeter is. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it can vary quite a bit. And, but that's also nice, you know, if you have a wider uh, rim and maybe that means that a 25 millimeter tire is actually 28 millimeters wide well that's great because now you have a very light tire because it's really still weighs the same as any other 25 but you get the effect of 28 millimeter width okay and then i presumably then if tires continue to get wider on the road uh you know people are riding 30s and 32s um that you could aero optimize it's not at the is it at the moment that 28 is the best higher volume tire to opt you know it's the most aerodynamically efficient or is it just that it's easier at the, this present time to, to optimize no, it's, that it, one um, that it's size. a combination of things so we in the tunnel we tested everything we've tested the tires mm. from 21 23 25 28 32 35 and 38 millimeters right and all with you know dozens and dozens of different rims with different widths mm -hmm. to try and optimize each of those tire widths you know yeah. aerodynamically uh, and it's, it gets very hard with a, you know, with a, a, a bigger tire than mm. what this is, which is already a bigger tire. Yeah, so, yeah. so right now, I think with 28, you can really get the optimal aerodynamics and get a, a pretty big comfort step from, mm. from 25 or 23 millimeter tires that most people are using now. Um, which again, doesn't mean that, you know, uh, a bike that's not designed for aerodynamics couldn't do with a bigger tire. Of course, we have the Explorer bike. You can fit everything up to a 2.1 yeah. inch mountain yeah. bike tire in. And there, of course, I mean, I ride that bike with a 30 millimeter tire mm. because, mm. Yeah, I, yeah, it's still a pretty fast bike actually aerodynamically, but it's not as fast as this because it's not, you can't optimize it that far when you want to have a big range of tires that yeah. fit. Yeah, yeah. So that sort of answers that question. Yeah. Well, it does answer that question. <laughs> I'm not even going to equivocate there. And we've been out riding on these today and, you know, been very impressed with the the performance of them it's difficult for us to benchmark whether they're faster than than another bike we would ride because we're on unfamiliar roads in an, in an yep. unfamiliar place but certainly i mean i've i've already been riding one by for two years on my on my main bike and i've i've never really had any problem with the range that you get from it it's interesting that we had two bikes that were set up quite differently so one had a 50 tooth at the front and 11 to 36 at mm -hmm. the back the other was a 44 i think and then 11 to 40 at the back so do you do you see that people will, will change it according to what they're doing or do you think it will be like like it is at the moment when you buy a bike, you'll buy it with a compact or you'll buy it with a semi-compact and you'll, you'll kind of stick with it? Yeah, I think most people will, will stick with it. Of course, if you know that you know normally you ride on pretty normal terrain and now you're going to go to the Alps for, uh, for two weeks for a vacation, maybe you, you tweak your cassette a bit. I don't think you need a lot because that range is really good enough for everybody. But of course, it also depends, like if you're going on vacation on the Alps and you're going to do 170 kilometer rides and the, the, the final climb is up the west, maybe you need a, a smaller gear than you would normally need yeah, even yeah. on that mountain because you're not maybe as fresh as. But for example, this is the exact bike that uh, Magnus Backstad rode uh, this week from uh, Roubaix via the Flanders course to the Mur de Huy from uh, Flèche Wallonne and then he did uh, uh, Galibier and Alp, Alp d'Huez and whatever and then Stelvio Gavia and came here and he did it all you know with the same tires same drivetrain so uh, you don't you don't need a lot uh, of, of different get it and you know okay people think you know he's a professional rider but he's also nowadays uh, 105 kilos <laughs> so <laughs> he hadn't been training at all so he was definitely suffering but uh, but you know not because of the bike um, so and that's you know the, the, the way he climbs nowadays uh, you know quite a few of uh, Mm -hmm. your, your readers uh, can also climb so oh yeah 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 no well probably yeah everybody will climb well let's not say me. too much about that yeah, yeah he's no still problem. a great guy magnus if you're looking if you're watching <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the ride <laughs> so this was his bike that he rode yep 
and he was running uh, 44, is that? Yeah, he decided to do this. I mean, he's been running 1Y for a while as well, yeah. and uh, he said, okay, if, if he was doing a crit, he'd put a bit bigger chain ring on, maybe, right, if he would have wanted yeah. that. But, but with a ride like this, like the top gear, when you use the top gear, okay, in the descent. Well, I mean, it, if you have a bigger top gear, you, you're going to top out at 80 kilometers an hour anyways, and nobody can pedal. Yeah. So it, this just means that you know, the point where you cannot pedal anymore goes, instead of you know, maybe 65 kilometers an hour, it's at 62 kilometers an hour. Well, it doesn't matter. You're still going to go 80 a couple yeah. seconds later. So yeah. it really doesn't make that much of a difference. And I think what people realize that everybody understands they don't cl climb like Chris Froome, but the fact of the matter is you don't descend like him either. Yeah. You know, for, yeah. First of all, because the roads aren't closed where we normally ride, yeah. and second of all, because we still don't have the skills and everything to yeah. do that. Yeah. So you also don't need that top gear that he does. And um, going on from talking about Chris Froome, so do you see this sort of bike, if not this bike itself, appearing in the pro peloton in the next two to three, in the medium term, short to medium term, two to three years? Yeah, I mean, not specific for him, of course. He has a, he makes his living riding something else. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't want people to get the wrong impression yeah. here. But... Um, you know, there's no, there's no doubt, if, if you want to win the biggest races, you need to have the fastest bike. Yep. You need to have a bike that, first of all, keeps you fresher, mm -hmm. and second of all, that has all the aero benefits that you can get. So, yes, you want to ride one bike for the aero benefits. I mean, you know, I don't think he has trouble figuring out the left and the right shifter, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, his yeah, problem. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. still, the aero benefits he wants to pick up, the comfort benefits he wants to pick up. So, yeah, for sure, on the on the really, really high-end performance side, this is this is the way it will go. But then also on the other end, like what I call myself, you know, maybe I'm riding slow, but within my slowness, I still want to go as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. So I also like these things. So it's not really that this, the bike is tailored towards a certain, you know, performance level. Like that's actually quite a wide range that can benefit from this bike. It's more uh, a level of, okay, how you know, do you want to ride? Like, are you an early adopter to new well, technologies? Well, that's what or I was sort of you? trying to get yeah. is this, this is, I mean, this is an early adopter's bike, yeah. but... The, your view is that this is the way the technology is that the future is for road cycling or uh, at the performance or maybe at all ends of the, all, all parts of the road cycling um I think so, yeah. I mean, and you've seen it on the mountain bike, right? It started very slow with one buy, yes. and now, you know, 95, 97% of sales or something like that is one buy. Right? It's, yeah. it's gone, it, it starts really slow, then it goes really quickly. And on gravel, you've seen the same thing. And on road, you've seen the same thing. And in all of those markets, there have always been, you know, some people who had uh, concerns uh, that were not really legitimate, but just, you know, those are yeah. just opinions, you know, the way pro cyclists don't ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, disc brakes, well, even good. though they've never ridden them, you know that yeah, sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then there are people with, you know, uh, with legitimate concerns, right? Mm -hmm. But those legitimate concerns, as I said earlier, those will be addressed. Yeah. You know, so 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 Shimano and SRAM will do a good job to come up with a drivetrain that addresses those concerns. But I think it will be around one by. It's not like they'll go back to two by. Yeah. Okay. And when do you see this this big this changeover starting to happen? When do you reckon we'll see a pro team on? one of these or something very similar? I don't know, one or two years. Right. But I mean, you know, what, what the first pro team to really ride all the time, deep section carbon yeah. uh, road wheels, you know, yeah. 2003 yeah. Uh, Team CSC when uh, Cervelo and Zip, you know, we all went there sort of together when they started yeah. riding those wheels. Uh, it took t 10 years before all the other teams were on it, right? Yeah. Because there were yeah, still yeah, 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 some, yeah. you know, uh, that's well, still so French, French yeah. speaking pro riders who knew for sure that a box section aluminum wheel was better, right? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, they yeah. say any reason they didn't win was because of the doping, right? So, yeah, but yeah, maybe yeah, it was yeah. just the wheels. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, and we could have the same. You could have the same conversation about disc brakes in the, in the pro. Peloton yeah, I mean, with disc years. brakes, I mean, I'd say it's a little bit different. I mean, of, of course, especially on a pro peloton, you don't necessarily need disc brakes in most situations, right? Yeah. I mean, rim brakes are adequate. It's not. It's not the same difference as you get from a you know a deep section carbon wheel versus an yeah, alloy yeah, box yeah, section wheel. Yeah. So I think it's a bit different, and I, and I don't think. I mean, we made this disc only, not because we say like you know the disc brake is the only legitimate brake. I think you could, you're perfectly fine also designing a, a bike around a rim brake. Mm -hmm. I just don't like the bikes that are designed around both. Yeah. Because first of all, it's up to us as the industry to figure out for our customers how they're best served. Yeah. And then offer that to them and not say like, yeah, we can't figure it out. So we just make everything and then just throw it into the store and then you, you go ahead and figure it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously, because they're, they're always going to be different anyway, because you're going to have to actually make them different. 
differently to yeah, the but fork's going to be different. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah. yeah, and they are different. It's not that they're the same. It's not the exact same. But still, you know, you would probably make the fork crown the same because otherwise your geometry is off with your yeah. with your frame and all these things, right? So so they are there are compromises to be made if you're if you're starting out with making a frame for both and then just only in the end split them in a, yeah. in a disc and a rim version. Yeah, I'm not saying that you know you could take a, a rim brake uh, bike and then just you know glue on the disc brake. I wouldn't recommend that for anybody, but uh, it's still different than if you just go in from the start, say it's going to be disc brake. So, so and I've got uh, probably one last question, unless uh, something else occurs. But so if you want to buy one of these, are they they're available? And I should have read our own story. Sorry, Dave Arthur. Um, but I was on my way to Europe Bike Live. Um, if you want to buy one of these, uh, they're available as complete bikes and as frame sets? So for starters, so they're coming onto the market uh, end of next month, so July, August, uh, they'll be appearing in stores, depending a little bit of where you are, and those will be frame sets. And then right. later on, we'll also offer some, uh, some more versions, uh, so some complete bikes and build kits and stuff. But the, the first uh, batch uh, will, be, uh, will be frame sets, so and frame fork did, and, and, and if you did... Uh, or when you do a, a complete bike, will you have some sort of configurate so that people can say that I want this chain ring, this cassette, this length stem? We have that. Uh, I mean, we, you know, the the way we work is we we don't have, you know, thousands of dealers. So the dealers yeah. we have are pretty specialized and they pretty yeah. well know what to do. So it's always a matter of you know working together with with your local shop to. Uh, and you can fine tune those things. So we'll offer a couple of options, and we'll definitely offer different, you know. Obviously, bar widths and stem lengths and yeah. and all these things, and because you know that's of course what 3T is also, sure. you know that's our heritage, right? We want everybody to fit properly, uh, especially on that end. So we'll offer quite a few options, but then of course the the, and the local then, shop. Uh, and actually, uh, leading on from that, then do you have sort of recommended wheels for for this? Yeah, bike? so that's because I mean it's not that complicated, but of course there is a lot of choice out there. You can also set it up with Shimano Di2 and yeah. and a one by setup, but you need to cobble that together a bit. So. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll demonstrate some, being, some ways that we, yeah, yeah, for the time being, we don't know anything. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll give some examples to people of, of how we think it goes together nicely. But then people, of course, are free to, to do as they yeah. wish. And do you do, uh, again, I should know this, apologies, but do you do, 3T do, like a tubeless version of this? Yeah, this all, is tubeless ready all our disc wheels are tubeless. So the right. 700s and the 650B, uh, they're, all, uh, they're all tubeless. So. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Gerard. We're going to take cover before uh, the lightning kills a stone dead. Oh, well. But thanks, Gerard, for your time. It's a good way to go on camera. Yeah, you know, yeah it's, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Hey, imagine the hits, as it were. <laughs> Brilliant. And uh, don't forget to subscribe for more like this on Road CC. Yeah, sure. Cheers. Go ahead and subscribe.